Hello and welcome to what's going to be the final video on rebuilding the engine for this excavator. After the last video, as promised, I put in a new oil cooler, which by the way came with studs, so I think I was onto something with how I was repairing the old one. Anyway, that's in. I also discovered a mistake in the shop manual for the head bolt tightening sequence. They had basically just taken the disassembly sequence and copied it over to the assembly sequence, which is clearly wrong. I should have known better. This is actually my fault. I should have just used my own experience, but I did go back and retorque the head properly. So that should all be taken care of. So let's get right back to the work and get this thing done. Okay, well, now that it's all clean, it doesn't actually look that bad, but there was some leakage on that front cover. So, hopefully this is the right size. There's the, okay, I was getting worried there, all right. I could have gotten there was a longer size, but I think I didn't want to go too long. So I think that should be good. Oh, this is dirty. What is this, the SKF 99241? Uh, I measured this, I think it was just under 80 millimeter, if I recall. Ooh, it might be, nah, I think that's right. It doesn't seem too loose. You can do this tiny bit of, uh, what is this, Loctite 680, just in this kind of worn groove right here. Uh, so if somehow oil gets through, it'll kind of get sealed in behind the CD, uh, speedy sleeve. That's probably too much. Just kind of line that up a little bit. It's a precise operation, as you can tell. This one is a little hard to get started, but it, I think I got it. It's probably because my pliers aren't the best, but. And it could have been that retaining compound slid down. I think that's what's going on here. There we go. Jeez. Yeah, that re retaining compound was definitely holding on to it. You can see it. If you can see that there. It definitely uh, got sucked down in there. So this, this damper, if you missed it in the last video, this damper was rebuilt by a company called Damper Doctor. And they replaced the rubber or whatever it's in here with silicone. Hopefully I got that speedy sleeve in the right spot. I don't know how is it supposed to remain leak proof. Maybe I should put a little uh, gasket sealing stuff here. I got this bolt back here, which is in the crankshaft, and it's hitting the rear of the engine stand. I don't have a uh, socket the right size, so we'll just make do. It's 318 foot-pounds, which 
translates into a whole heck of a lot. We'll just, it's gonna break the engine stand if I crank on it that much, probably. I, I mean, it's just not safe to push on it that much more. This whole thing's gonna break. I need an impact to do it. We'll hold off on that. I'll have to get a bigger socket to do it right. All right, I got the uh, alternator and crank pulley lined up there in the camera. So I want to see how the water pump lines up. It does appear to be a little bit back. Let's get a belt on here. I mean, it's close, but it needs to move forward a tiny bit. I just did a more accurate measurement and it's, it, needs to, it needs to come forward a quarter of an inch, which should put it about right here. Took me some time, but I think I remember how these brackets go on. Get them there. Not really sure the purpose of this bracket. I guess maybe to fasten the rear of the injector pump to the block better. I was waiting to tighten that before this bracket was on. And this guy. I think this is, this is the last one, I believe. This is just uh, to run the, I think this is the cable for the throttle or whatever you'd call it. And then this is the shut off. It goes through here and there. Don't quote me on any of this. Is that right? Yeah. And this holds the, uh, what is that? The fuel filter, if I recall. So like that, yeah. Should probably clean this out a little bit better. There was actually a spider living in here. I don't know if you could tell that. This is for the water separator. This thing was really bad. I just went to town on it with a pipe cleaner on all these, these holes here to clean it out. Now there was this banjo bolt with a uh, strainer in it. This end broke and this thing's like really old kind of crummy plastic. So I'll, I'm going to try to find, there's actually two of these. I'm going to try to find another like replacements for these, but for now I'll just kind of have it here. I have washed these already, but I'm just kind of just making sure no new dust has gone in here. These dry out for a second. Keep the brake clean out of the engine. Oh yeah, that was it. go. Ah. I'm 
we'll be uh, cracking these later to bleed it, so I'm not going to really tighten these too much. The bottom ones, I guess, I can tighten more. This is... Insulation's kind of falling off here, but that should be okay. This is the power for the uh, glow plugs, I think. Uh, so like that. No, that doesn't look good either. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, it needs to be like this. Yeah, okay. As long as it's not touching. Put a little grease on here so these stick. Pardon the uh, vacuum noise. Hopefully it's not too loud. I had to rewatch some old video and go back out to the machine. I found this pipe and this one. So this is the outlet. It goes right here. And then the inlet comes here. There's only a couple things that are important to remember. Wait, that's, is this the right piece? This is not the right fitting. What am I thinking? This is the one we want. Okay, this makes more sense. Bear with me here. That goes there. That goes there. This goes here. Right? think. Wait. Forgot this. Believe that's right. Now for the rest of these fittings, there's only two strainers, but I happen to note, there's no way I would have known this otherwise. You can see in here, there's like threading on the inside right there. And there's only two of these that have that threading and I noticed that's where the strainers came out of. And the only strainers are in the inlet. Right there. And there's the other one. Here's the other one. The only other strainer was down here underneath. I think this is for the lift pump. So this one goes up under here. Actually, I just realized that the reason that these have threads is because there's threading right here and these screw in. Um, I am going to replace these, by the way. These are pretty shot, but I'll just keep them here for now. This one go. Aha, there we go. One thing I need to do here, these surfaces are painted. I need to wipe that part off with acetone just because that's the ceiling surface. Get that paint off of there. 
looks good. That looks better. Let's just go. This one's got quite a dent in it. Probably be okay. Okay, last one. Like that? Oh, that's easy. And this one had the strainer on the bottom. I verified that. Yeah, these two lines are touching, so let me just kind of tweak them a little bit. That's better. Don't want anything touching. I need to try to find another one of these. It's like so clouded you can't see through here. This is supposed to float in here. Let me clean that off. I can't even see what the fuel and the water are doing. So this is the inlet. You can see the arrow right here. So this is the fuel water separator. Goes out through the outlet. Oh, and there's a strainer right here. It goes out through here into the bottom. This is the lift pump right here. So there's another strainer here. So it goes out through the lift pump. You got a manual pump here. It goes into the inlet, if you can see that it says in. And then this comes out through the filter. This is the inlet for the injection pump, which goes out to obviously each injector right here. And then this is the bleed off which goes out through here along with any excess from the uh, lift pump. They meet up right here. And then that line goes to here where it meets up with any excess from the injection pump, which I think there's a bleed off for that too. And then uh, that's the outlet back to the fuel tank. So a really simple inlet outlet. Um, the one thing I don't remember is one of these is like a throttle and one's a cutoff. I think this is a cutoff right here. I'm gonna guess, and that's the throttle. Don't quote me on that. Charlie, is it time for bed? Okay, let me mention these ceiling washers really quick. You'll probably notice I use copper washers everywhere. Originally what was on it were these bonded ceiling washers. They are, uh, they're kind of like a, crush washer but they have like a rubber insert you can see like this one's falling apart so these are actually quite a bit better than the copper ones I didn't have any of these on hand I had a bunch of copper ones on hand so I'll give these a shot these are annealed they're nice and soft they should be okay this isn't really high pressure I don't think until you get to these lines which don't use them we'll give this a shot um, I've tightened these fittings down as comfortable as I feel as they should be. So if there are leaks, I'm not going to go through and start tightening fittings more because this stuff is all aluminum and these fittings will end up pulling the threads out of it. So um, if there's any leaks, I'm just going to have to go buy some of the proper washers and, and swap them in. But these should be okay. I need a coolant hose from here to here. This is the coolant bypass hose. Here's the original. Now this is a one inch hose or whatever metric equivalent or whatever. This is a one inch fitting, but on the new pump, this is three quarters. So even if I replace this, it's not going to work, which is fine. So I got a one inch to three quarter. This is a, I think this is billet fitting here. And then I got this generic one inch hose. I just need to pick off the right angle to cut out. And then I can, you see what I'm going for here. This is actually a nice hose. It's got a lot of options on it. I think this is the best one though. All right. So. 
about right here. Okay. So this needs to be shorter, right? <clears throat> oh, that'll work. Okay. Now we just need to cut. That'll do. All right, so I don't, I really don't like using hose clamps. Uh, they're just, they never work right and they're, they're terrible. So I've been wanting to try these for a long time. These are the Gates uh, coolant clamps. It's basically like a shrink wrap for a wire, but it's, it's for a coolant hose. So I figured I'd try it out. A box of 10 of them is six bucks. So it's actually probably cheaper than hose clamps. They're just obviously one time use though. I haven't done this before. Let's try it out. How do you get it off of here? Ow. There we go. All right, that's the trick. I got a bunch of these in case it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not shrinking yet. It's starting to shrink. Not sure how long to go on here. Okay, well it's not turning, that's a good sign. Uh, I just looked in the box and there was actually instructions in here, so... First of all, it shows you how to take it out. I guess I did that right. It says if you have a thousand watt heat gun, it takes about 60 seconds. So this is 350, I did it for a few minutes. So I guess we'll just have to try it and see. Let's do this one next. Put a little grease on this. Help it seal. It was just caught on there, I guess. Yeah, it looks good still. All right, the hoist is actually still holding up most of it. I have maybe 10% of the weight on those blocks right now. As I mentioned in a previous video, I put the wrong rear main in here. So see if I can sneak this out without damaging the sh internals. Just don't want to scratch anything. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking drilling right into your crankshaft like this. But... Ouch. Ah, it's coming out though. There we go. Didn't even drill into anything. Yep. All right, let me show you where I went wrong in the rear main. Because this is not explained in the manual, at least the ones I looked at at all. So there appears to be two types of seals that go in these engines. And don't quote me on any of this, but this is kind of what 
I've deduced. So this is the original seal that was in my engine. It's a traditional shaft seal. It's got like a spring that popped out there. And it rides on that ring that's around the outside of the crankshaft. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this, is the, this is the replacement seal that came in my kit, which is the wrong size, just like everything else in that kit, so I couldn't use it. But this is the same style. This is, I think, a double lip seal. So that would have worked, well, it's, it's way too thick and it's the wrong size. So. so this is the seal I just pulled out. I mean, you can tell because there's a drywall screw in it. But it came with this wear ring, which I tossed aside. But this is actually part of the design. It's not, it's not the same kind of seal as the other one. It's, it's just a lip right here. There's no spring or anything in there. And this is designed, I think this actually goes like here. And this is designed to fling oil away from the seal and keep it from leaking, which I think this is the most common type of, of seal for this particular engine. Anyway, I got a replacement seal, uh, which is the original design. You can see it's, it's, it's exactly like this one, same part number. So this is what's going back on. A big, big thank you to Miles from uh, South Africa. He's an Isuzu tech. He kind of helped me through this. Okay, so this ring right here is where my seal rides on. And I, you can replace it if it gets worn out. Um, but if that's not there, which is like the more common type, like I was saying, you have to install this wear ring and you have to have a special tool to set it to the right depth uh, to mate with, where is that? To mate with uh, this properly. So fortunately I don't have to worry about that since I have this style of seal. Is it South Africa or is it South Africa? Is that the correct pronunciation? Would have been uh, embarrassing if I fired this thing up and it was spraying oil out the back. Get this in without folding a lip over. <clears throat> it's tight. Just get some grease on here to help it. Gotta pass that one on. And actually, get this pushed in by hand pretty good. It's going real slow. No hurry. All right, I think we're on there all the way. Looks pretty centered on this ring. Seal lips not folded back. All right, the manual says to put a uh, liquid gasket, or I guess in this case, RTV around the bell housing. on the dowels. You know, if that cam plug does leak, I got uh, sealing all around it, so it should contain it in there, right? Not that I think it's going to leak, but... Two bolts holding the starter on. I guess two nuts. The uh, wiring's a little bit suspect on this thing, but we'll fix that up later. All right. Let me uh, clean off this mounting flange here real quick. So everything mounts flush. not nearly as heavy as the flywheel on the Caterpillar, that's for sure. So the manual is pretty specific here. It just says to lube these bolts 
and then you got to tighten them in a certain order. So that's what we'll do. This one. All right. Let me go over these one more time just to make sure. But that should be good. Okay, I think we're ready to put this on the run stand. So this is what I have. This is the Summit brand run stand. I bought it a while ago for another project, but um, I think I can make this work, hopefully. It's, I think it's rated for 1,500 pounds. So this engine's only seven or 800, should be fine. It's pretty, it's pretty sturdy, even though it kind of looks janky. Uh, it's really made for like, you know, small block or, or big block Ford Chevy or Chrysler. It's kind of how it's set up, but really, I mean, you can make any bracket you want. So that's, I think it shouldn't be a problem. Actually, I just noticed the first problem the height of these legs on the engine hoist is like a quarter of an inch higher than the bottom of this run stand. So I can't slide the legs underneath it. So I guess we'll have to maybe set this up on blocks or something. Little stuff like that is so annoying. So this is uh, one and a half by one and a half by 0.2 thick. And this is the weld line, so we'll drill on this side. should work for the front mounts this looks like a typical small block or big block mount this is what the engine mount looks like for the uh, suzu here this goes into the uh, ears on the block and then this goes into the frame so i happen to remember that older 60s and 70s chryslers had this style of of uh engine mount which is pretty much I mean, this thread's a little smaller, but this, sh this should work pretty good. So you can run a bolt through here on each side, and then this goes right into the ears on the engine block. These were like eight or $9 each at the auto store. I think it's like a late 60s, early 70s Mopar mount style. All right, ground that off. I feel like this video is going in slow motion. I just it's already been three weeks and I haven't hardly gotten anything done since the last one. I guess some of it's just was waiting and ordering on parts. It's also springtime, so there's a lot of chores to do around here. You know, I'm only working out here like one or two hours a night, probably like a lot of you guys. After I put the kids to bed, just work a little bit out here when I can. 
I guess slow and steady. Right here. Nice. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, I got the bolts in on this top cross member right here. So that's good. I overlooked it. This is what I missed though is that uh, you can see this plate right here that it's sitting on. There's no plate down here. So that's what I missed. So I need, uh, I'm gonna need to put another plate in here because I really want this thing to sit straight, like perpendicular with this plate. I'm, I'm actually very concerned about, uh, cause I only have four, these are like 10 millimeter bolts holding this bell housing in. I'm, I'm worried about it cracking under load. <clears throat> so. That's, I'm going to cut those out and I think I'm just going to weld this whole bottom member in uh, and then when I take the engine off I can just unbolt it. So this, this cross member will stay with the stand. The, uh, the lugs on the pump mount right there, so those do stick out past the bell housing. I was worried about that. I, I figured they would. So that's why I'm kind of why I'm doing this because they uh, clear now. So besides that I think we're good though. I have to do a little more grinding than originally planned here. That's okay. Well, the wind is really picking up. Hopefully, we don't lose power. It's tight. It's actually so windy, I think I'm going to close the uh, barn door here a little bit. I'm gonna throw off the welding. And right when this touches, that's a sign that I need to set the height of the front mounts. Right there. This is low. I didn't really give myself much uh, space here. Charlie's really turned up tonight. We got it all tightened up. Let's uh, see what happens here. Hopefully, nothing bad. Seems pretty sturdy on here. Yeah, that might work. Don't see any way this can go wrong. So 
Should I put the brakes on? Is there brakes on this? No brakes on this side, so guess not. Oh. All right, that wasn't too bad. It does look like it's canted just a tiny bit forward, but the rear frame looks pretty straight up and down. So I think what's happening is the rubber mounts, you know, those $8 mounts I got are uh, compressing a little bit. So I think that should be fine as it is. Oh yeah, that feels really good. I was kind of worrying about these things like falling over or something, but it's on here good. Yeah. I feel pretty good about that. It, it feels solid. Get back here. Harder to reach back here, but uh, hopefully it works. Otherwise, I can just cut it off and throw a T clamp on. But this is a lot cleaner, so we'll give this a shot. That well, was not moving on there, on the top or the bottom. It's not rotating on there. That's a good sign. These are not the best T-clamps I've seen. They came with a hose, but I might have to replace these. These are kind of garbage. It needs to come forward a quarter of an inch to uh, get the pulleys to line up. I was looking through my washers and I found this washer left over from the cat and it fits perfectly flush in here. Uh, it's a quarter inch, exactly thick. Just need to get the drill out and then we're gonna gently widen this hole right here. Whoa, there's a spider in here. Spider. Yeah, it's gone. All right, well, it looks like a rat chewed this thing, but uh, that should work. I also kind of ground the outside too, uh, just so there wouldn't be any interference with the inside of the pulley. Give this a shot here. There's still paint on the nose of this. Oh, first try. Nice. So this is just kind of temporary. There's another spacer that goes on here and then the fan, but I don't want to run the fan on this thing because I'll end up cutting my hand off. I'll put some exterior fans on the radiator to keep it from overheating, hopefully. Now I did buy a new belt. This is a uh, genuine Isuzu belt. It's way wider, but it actually fits these pulleys a little bit better. But I think it's going to be too long than the original. So we'll see if I can fit it on here. Yeah, it's not gonna work. It's a shame. More money wasted. Eh, 
we'll call that good for now. I think that's okay. If anything, it could go back like a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, the uh, the water pump pulley. But that's pretty close. This thing is just a little bit too big for this. Yeah, that'll do it. A couple zip ties. I got new radiator hoses. These are supposed to fit on the machine. But this thing is just wedged in here just enough where I think I can make these work. Come on. Yeah. I can make that work. By the way, I did order a new these new heater hose fittings. Well, this one's not on here, but both of these were pretty crusty, so I got some new ones coming. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this video, I guess. I was hoping to do more, but things move slowly. So next video, it's going to be starting it. But before I do that, let's just run through what I got to do. Uh, got to put oil in it. That would be a good idea. Prime the oiling system. I got to do all the wiring. So I'm going to do the wiring off camera, I think, because that's going to be really boring. But I do have to do that. It's going to be 12 and 24 volt to get the gauges to work. I'm just talking about these gauges right here. These are all 12 volt, I think, except for that TAC gauge. And that runs off of the alternator, I think. We also got to get the fuel system primed and all the air bled out of it. So that, sh well, that, that won't be too bad. Got to get some coolant added. The good news is that all the kind of the slow and the time consuming stuff is done. The next video should be in the next week or two because all I really have to do is throw fluids in it and start it. So I'm really happy to be actually be done with this thing. I've been working on it for a couple months now and it'll be nice to move on to something else. So there's plenty of other things to work on around here. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.